I'll get right back to you in just a second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so today is September 9th, and this is Meditation and Teshuva Part 2. And um, we are going, we are, I have started recording the session already. Um, so I'm letting you know that. Um, as usual, I am the tech host of sorts for tonight, and Shoshana is the program host. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I just want to remind people that um, most of the previous schmoozes are available online at the Becky website under the learning menu. It's the last choice on the learning menu. And all but one of the schmoozes is listed there in its entirety. Um, so you can enjoy that or refer other people to that if you're interested. Um, I will let you know if you're planning to attend the Schmooze tomorrow night, right, Rachel Adelstein's, um, which I'm sure um, Shoshana will refer to later. Um, that will not be recorded. So if you have an aversion to that, come to that. Um, <laughs> in any case, um, except for the flyer that's up there now, I don't think, Robin, you're going to be doing any other screen sharing, correct? Yeah, no. Right. Okay, so everybody should probably put themselves on mute. And as the session continues, everybody but Robin and Shoshana, that is. <laughs> and uh, as the session continues, I will try to monitor to make sure, especially in this session, that nobody comes in with distracting noises, etc. cetera. Um, Robin really would love to listen to you breathing. So there might be a point, Robin, I'm going to leave it to you to ask people at what point you'd like them to unmute so that you can um, monitor things the way that you want to. There will be a, um, a chance for comments and questions. Just put those in the chat if you want. And we'll have a point sort of half, eh, halfway or so to um, take a look and see if there's any comments that need addressing right then. Otherwise, um, you can hold your comments and questions to the end. As always, just give me a um, the word, comment, or question in the chat, and I'll make sure that you're you're um, listed to do that. Um, we may break into smaller breakout rooms uh, a little bit later, um, where Robin can maybe interact with you or monitor, or you can actually work together in your meditation. Um, anybody have any questions about the format or anything? Yair, hello. Sorry um, that you just missed this tech um, introduction, but stay muted. <laughs> okay. And Shoshana, take it away. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome everyone. And um, I am going to introduce Robin, who I think just about everybody knows, but she is uh, a Becky member, a dentist, and an expert meditator and a certified meditation instructor. We have had sessions with her. This is probably, I don't know, the fifth or sixth year high holiday preparation meditation. And it, I think it's always a really nice way to get oneself, um, get our heads on straight, getting ready for the holidays. And I will say that last week at our session, I had a mini epiphany which was very wonderful. And I'm hoping that all of you have something, an experience like that. So listen carefully to her words because they're very provocative um, and in and, and directing your, your thoughts and your meditation. So um, Robin, here you go. Here I go. Well, welcome everyone to part two of the schmooze. Um, I'm looking forward to meditating with you all tonight. I've put my contact information in the chat feature I do Tuesday weekly Zoom meetings um, to do more meditation, um, and I teach meditation individually. So if you want to get in contact with me, you can take my email or my cell phone, send me a message, and I can put you on the reminder, the nagging list, the reminder mm -hmm. list for uh, Tuesday nights. Um, and I just hope that you have, you know, just tonight, just a wonderful experience. Um, I do request that people keep their video on and their... Um, let's see, their microphones on, if that works for you. Um, but I'm generally pretty flexible and I'm always hoping that you're taking care of your own needs. If you need to walk around and make noise, just, 
just close off your video and your mic and stretch and then you can come back. Um, I plan to do the first meditation for about 20 minutes and then it, we can do a little exercise in the breakout rooms where we have meditations in like small groups and I'll explain more about that before we go. And then another, let's see, and then another 20 minutes of meditation to just keep going and get even deeper in. So um, I invite everybody to find a comfortable position. Hmm. And the first step is just to notice that you're in whatever position you are, you know, feel your feet against the ground or whatever they're against, your legs. See if you can keep your spine nice and straight, shoulders pulled back. So your chest is nice and open. See if you can find a comfortable place for your head so that it's more or less right over your spine. I will say that I'm on Zoom and last week I had trouble with my internet and I got kicked off and I came right back on. So I appreciate everybody who just hung in. And uh, I would say that if I get kicked off, just keep breathing and I'll be right back. So the first step is to notice your everyday breath. Without trying to change your breath, see if you can pay attention to, are you inhaling or are you exhaling? Notice what parts of your body move when you inhale and when you exhale. And this is the part where if you have constrictive clothing on, you might wanna loosen your belt so that your belly can move the way it wants to move instead of the way your clothes tell it to move. Notice if your normal breathing pattern is through your nose or through your mouth. And see if you can notice, do you tend to put more emphasis on your inhales or on your exhales? Of course, some of us I know are advanced meditators, but if we have any occasional or newbie meditators, just this bit of practice throughout your day can make a huge difference. Checking in to feel your body, feel the breath moving in and out of your body and noticing if your inhale or your exhale seems to have more emphasis. Naturally through the day, this shifts and changes. You might notice when you're listening and trying to be sensitive to another person or a set of ideas that naturally your inhale will be longer and fuller. And you may notice that when you're trying to be persuasive or to get a lot done, that your exhale is longer. So just that one little practice of noticing your breath through the day and seeing if there's like a metaphorical connection between giving and receiving going on where your breath is echoing your activity.
And of course, having some influence over our own moods is a wonderful, wonderful skill to develop. In meditation, we attempt to get our inhale and our exhale to be even. So as you breathe in and out, imagine that there's an energy of the breath that you're sending out from the middle of your chest when you exhale, and you're receiving in through the middle of your chest when you inhale. <clears throat> It's almost like your breath is having a game of catch with you. As you breathe in, the ball moves towards you. And it's sort of like a catcher in, in a baseball game, holding their glove up right over their heart. See if you can get that sense of the energy of the breath moving towards you as you inhale. I'm even putting my hands up the way a catcher holds their mitt. See if I can feel that energy coming towards me. And then as I exhale, I'm moving the energy back out into the world the way a catcher throws it to the pitcher. And I think of the ease with which a catcher receives and throws the ball, having done it thousands and thousands of times. Just the same way you've breathed thousands and thousands of times. So throughout your day, your breath shifts so that you're either putting more emphasis on the inhale or more emphasis on the exhale. But here in meditation, you're searching for the balance point. And although Pesach isn't for many more months, today I was thinking about this class and what I would say. And I was thinking about how this month reminds me of when you've cleaned out all the chametz and you go around with the feather and the candle looking for that last bit of bread, the last crumb. When you breathe in, see if you can get that sense of, as the holidays approach, 
What do I need to be made aware of? So to make this even more pronounced, you might like to rest your hand on your face and cover over the, the right nostril so you're only breathing in and out through your left nostril. It's not essential, but you may find that it puts you very much in that receiving frame of mind. And as you inhale, imagine the breath coming in like the feather and the candle. What do I need to know? What do I need to be aware of? See if you can keep yourself, ironically, I'm asking you questions, but I'm gonna say to try to see if you can keep yourself from thinking and to stay in that place of curiosity and just sort of breathe in that sense of a very thorough examination. Because it's not that bread is bad. Bread sustains life. It's just in the context of your kitchen for Passover, bread doesn't belong there. So as you inhale, see even if you can ask your inner soul or God, what doesn't belong here at this moment? Maybe there's a sense of shame for having missed the mark. A sense that you won't be forgiven. Maybe there's a sense of blame that someone else can't be forgiven for what they've done. See if you can breathe in the gentleness of the feather, the warm glow of the candle. You know that when you get your kitchen ready, Everything is shiny. Everything is spick and span. You've worked really hard to get it perfect. And still we have a ritual of looking. And if you hear in your mind the complaints that you complain against yourself always, try to let those out when you exhale. But if you hear something that you've never thought of before, like a way to forgive yourself or a person who's done wrong, something that surprises you, that's a treasure if that happens. And you don't even have to know what it is. Just the fact of being willing to look is a tremendous thing to be glad about. That sense you have that when I'm done looking, if there's any more wrongdoings, if there's any more things to be forgiven, I've done, I've done it. I've, I've honestly looked. We're not gonna go picking at it anymore after this. We're gonna just earnestly look. And it might not even have any words that pop into your mind. Just the sense 
of completion. I already worked hard. I already asked forgiveness. There couldn't be anything left. And yet I'm inhaling, inhaling the feather, inhaling the light. I'm willing for every corner of myself, of my heart, mind, and soul to be, to be open to God, to be looked at. Even places where you've given up, where you feel that the wrong you did or the wrong that was done to you couldn't possibly be forgiven. Even those places. See if you can brush them gently with a feather. Shine the gentle light of the candle on them. Maybe you have that sense of how will I ever be able to correct this? Because there are some problems that are group problems. And we do a lot of our confessions for the holidays as a group. So to get more energy, to be part of the solution, shift your hand over and now block off the left nostril. And breathe in and out through your right side. And see what words occur to you when you're humbly asking God for help. As you breathe out, source, give me strength to be part of the solution. May my breath be added to setting things right. As you breathe in through that right nostril, see if you can feel yourself filled up with a calm strength, with an encouragement to keep going, with a willingness to try again and breathe that out. Let my breath be for good. And it'll be interesting to see as you feel through that right exhale, you may get a sense that it's a way you need to change or maybe a way to help others' lives be more full, more safe. You may feel part of the community that changes together it strikes people both ways, or maybe some combination. However it strikes you is right for you in this moment. Breathe in the encouragement, the strength that's quiet and soft. The sense of hope. an 
And as you breathe out, get that sensation of moving forward, taking the next step. Now, the next thing we'll do is the breakout rooms. So if you would like to be included in a breakout room, in a few minutes, Daryl will send a message and click yes on your screen. And what we'll do in there is, however many people are there, when you exhale, look into your camera of your laptop so that your partner can see your eyes totally on them. And as you exhale, think, yes, you will be forgiven. Yes, you can forgive this. And as you inhale, look at your screen and see your partner's eyes and just feel the experience of standing before God and being forgiven. Standing for, before God and being able to forgive anything. So we'll do that for about six minutes. Don't feel that you have to, you can stay in the break. We can stay here in this main room if, if it's not comfortable for you. Um, but I welcome you to give it a try because I think you'll like it. Daryl, will you be so kind to time our six minutes and invite us back when uh, we get to that point. Good, looks like Many people went. Nancy, you and I can just sit here and, and keep breathing.
We're about a minute away. Um, oh, here I am. Welcome back. That's wonderful. Alrighty. So I don't see any questions in the chat in the chat feature, but if you do have any midway questions, um, and I will leave time at the end. If you have any midway questions, just raise your hand, and we can we can have. Three times. Excellent. All righty. So let's get back into our meditative posture with our spine nice and straight. And I'm gonna I'm gonna invite people if you'd like to try breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you breathe in through your in through your nose, feel your energy moving from the base of your spine, through your solar plexus, through your heart, through your neck, through your head, and up up to maybe an, a half a foot, maybe more above your head. As you inhale, feel your attention moving up. And then as you exhale down through your mouth, feel your attention moving down, down to the base of your spine. And please modify these instructions. If it feels better to move the energy all the way down to your feet, by all means, or if it feels better to move the energy just up to your heart, do what, whatever intuition you get. Go ahead and do that. But as you inhale, move up. And as you exhale, move down. I think what's so interesting about being human is that we make we make these uh, attempts to be wiser than we were last year, to be kinder. And we never have the sense that it actually worked because however wise and kind you are, <coughs> you have the ability to do that, it feels as if you've always been able to do that. However much you can calm yourself back down when you need to, or be there from, for someone else when you need to, it has that curious feeling, not of uh, 
celebration to rejoice over, but that, of course, I've always been able to do this. But I'm sure that if you speak to someone who's known you for a long time, that they will tell you how beautifully you've developed. Maybe your struggles are larger because you've taken on more responsibility. And this up and down breathing that we're doing, it kind of reminds me of the high holidays. As we inhale, we move a little closer to God. Our sense of what's ours to do expands. Our ability expands. And then as we exhale, we move down into our everyday life where the rubber meets the road. And the things that are challenging are still challenging. And then as we inhale again, up we go. And our connection to source, our connection to God, stronger than ever. And as we exhale, we appreciate the challenges that we've taken on. The real nitty gritty, how hard it is. So see if you can get that feeling as you breathe in through your nose. You might feel expanded or elated and then out through your mouth sense of acceptance of what is, sense of calm and soothing for exactly where you are on your path right now. For me, that's what this season is all about. Chance to go slowly enough to inhale and rise up in connection. And then to know that I'll exhale and reconnect with my real nitty gritty daily self. And that those two parts of me are just both true and everything in between. They're both completely, truly who I am. Delight and connection to the one. and sympathy and kindness for the everyday life. Because just like the bread that we search for before Passover, our everyday lives are what nourish us. There's nothing wrong with bread. It just doesn't belong in our kitchen during Passover. And our habits and our qualities, 
that sometimes match the situation and sometimes don't. There's nothing wrong with them. They just sometimes are out of place. And other times they're magnificent and glorious. I hope you will find much ease this holiday season. I hope you will find peace and a sense of connection to source, to God, however you understand God to be. I pray that you will feel a connection to the Jewish people and to all people, no matter how you celebrate or don't celebrate. I pray you'll have the sense that your prayers are answered and that God will help you be the kind of person you wanna be next year as fully as possible. Thank you so much for showing up tonight and for adding your breath to our circle. I very much appreciate it. So when you're ready, open your eyes, move your fingers and toes. And if you, if you feel comfortable to, I would love you to share something that went well for you during tonight's meditation. Well, I just want to really thank you. Um, After dinner, I was feeling a little sleepy and thought I should, I might take a nap. And then I thought, no, I can meditate instead. And (laughs) it turns out to be better than a nap, um, which (laughs) that it's, (laughs) I know that's not saying much, but. No, I was going to say for many people, that's the highest praise you can give something. (laughs) (laughs) really uh, I feel rested I feel ready to keep getting back to work and uh, I was afraid I would be overly relaxed but it that didn't happen right thank you you're welcome thank you dear Uh, most of my meditation I learned from Aikido And so you start from your center. And so rather than having the energy go up, you have the, you think of your center um, as this bubble and you're expanding this bubble outwards and you can make it go out to the, you know, the farthest reach of the universe or just to the top of your head. And then you contract it, contract it down to your center, which is pretty close to the base of your spine. So it's funny, I have trouble doing it the thinking of it the way you do it, because it's so automatic doing it the other way. Good. Well, I, I'm so glad that I gave the instruction to follow your own, your own designs, because that's, that's what the intention is. Well, I always try to, I also try to do it the way somebody else suggested to see if it, if it works better, if it works the same, or yeah. So, but it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming and thank you for trying. Yes. 
Yeah. I like the breakout room again. I thought that was, I'm always a little skeptical and then it's quite powerful um, really looking at one another and having these thoughts and intentions. Um, so that was, that was very helpful for me. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, I liked what you were saying about um, inhaling, I think is like getting God in you and exhaling is giving back. And it made me think about when I lead services, I very much feel that way that when I stand there, I get God's energy to be a, a, a leader and, and uh, the leader for prayer and by my singing sort of um, projecting that out over all the people who are sitting in the sanctuary and so it was nice to hear it in a different context yes very that's my experience when you're leading my dear that is exactly <laughs> my experience that's a great example of uh of that pitcher and catcher kind of the ball coming in and out. Thank you. Mm. And thank you thank for all you. the work that you do. It's beautiful. Does anybody else want to say anything before I make some closing announcements? Anybody have anything to share? Thank you so much, Robin. This was wonderful. Um, Tomorrow night, we are having another session with Rachel Adelstein, who's an ethnomusicologist, and she's gonna be talking about music of the high holidays. And she has, I think, put together some interesting um, pieces of music for us to listen to, as well as she's going to talk about how did the melodies get so ornate and you know um, interesting and why. So that should be interesting. Um, Saturday night is our Slichot service, which will start as close to 8 o'clock as possible, given that Shabbat ends at 7.47. Um, but we're going to start with a family-oriented Havdalah service um, with some singing and guitar playing. And then we have a talk by a woman named Adi Alouf, who's from the um, Jews for Economic and Racial Justice. And she's going to talk about racial justice and Teshuvah. And then we will have our Slichot service led by Isaiah Cooper. Um, and uh, one of the, I think Taya uh, Kleinberger is gonna be doing part of the service as well. And that starts at eight and everything I believe is gonna be on the same um, link that we're using tonight. And just also put on your calendar, Monday night, Jay Sokolow is gonna do some interesting text study about taking stock in preparation for the holidays. And he's going to be comparing some uh, Jewish texts with the, the thoughts of the 12 step programs. So we've got a lot of interesting programs coming up to get us ready for uh, the holidays. And thank you very much, Robin. This as always was quite inspiring and relaxing and interesting. Yes, Robin, I really wanna thank you. It was a wonderful way for me to um, get more involved with meditation. Thank you. I have um, in the chat feature, my phone number and yeah, my email that. address. Um, I do, I do um, Tuesday night meditations and I do individual helping people with their meditations. So if um, anybody is interested, please reach out to me and I can put you on the reminder list or. Yeah. Are you still doing the, the meditations that you did some weekday mornings, I think, at Becky? Um, I'm not, I'm not doing those right now. I'm doing, the only meditation I'm doing is over Zoom because of the quarantine. Right, I understand. And um, I'm doing it Tuesday nights. Let's see if I can remember now. It's like, how do you know you did a good meditation? It's like, Tuesday yeah. nights, 7.30 to 8.30. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, but <laughs> don't quote me. Okay. Just sign up and I'll put you on the reminder list. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. For and thank you, Daryl and Shoshana, for taking time to lead us all and be available. All right. See you Shana soon. Tova, everybody. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. I'll see some of you tomorrow. <laughs>